This is a little homework help video for the lesson 3.1. I've picked uh, two problems to do for you, and I hope this will help you with the others. Uh, this is number 21, and uh, we're given this function as, as indicated here at the top of the screen. And our directions are to, it's a multi-part instructions. Uh, we're first of all finding the y-intercept. So remember we said in class the y-intercept, that's really easy. Um, in this standard form, I'll just go ahead and label these numbers. The number in front of x squared is a. The number in front of x, the linear coefficient, is b. And this constant, number without a variable, is labeled as c. So if I want to find the y-intercept, it's really just a matter of finding out what c is. And in this case, the y-intercept is 9, or we could show it as 0, 9, whichever, either way. Okay, so that's easy enough. We have a y-intercept of 9, and now the next instruction says to find the AOS, the equation that represents the AOS. And that's going to utilize this formula, the opposite of b over 2a. And I've already labeled these numbers for you. The, the b coefficient is 3. The a coefficient is negative 2. And remember, it's 2 times negative 2. 2 times a. All right, in the parentheses, I have negative 3 fourths. But when I apply this opposite of, I get positive 3 fourths. So the equation for the AOS is the line x equals positive 3 fourths. OK? So we got the y-intercept, we've got the equation for the AOS, and now the next thing says, well, what is the x-coordinate of the vertex? Well, if you know the AOS number, you got it because it's the same number. The x-coordinate of the vertex is 3 fourths. So now we're ready to uh, go ahead and make a table, and while we're add it since we know the x coordinate of the vertex let's find out what the y is and that just amounts to putting three fourths in place of x in our function so if you want to use your calculator and do 0.75 uh, decimal uh, that will work so in your calculator it'll look something like this negative two times 0.75 squared plus three times 0.75 plus 9. All right, I'm going to grab my calculator and we'll just work through this. So negative 2, parentheses, 0.75, close parentheses, raised to the second, plus 3, parentheses, 0.75, close parentheses, plus 9. And I end up with 10.125. Okay, which is fraction form is 10 and an eighth. Yeah, just a little bit more than 10. Okay, so uh, let's just go ahead and plot that point and then we'll build the rest of our table. So 3 fourths, not quite to 1, and then we're going to go up a little more than 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then just a little bit higher than that. And this is just a guesstimate. You don't have to try to be exact, but I'm thinking that's where three-fourths, ten, and one-eighth would be. All right, um, so let's start putting another, other points like the y-intercept. Um, that's where this graph is going to cross the y-axis, of course. So we have a point at 0, 9, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. Okay, we have symmetry right here at this line x equals three-fourths. So... Um, if we go to the line of symmetry, that's 3 fourths. If we go another half, okay, then we will be the same distance away, okay? So that should be 3 fourths of a unit away. 3 fourths here, that's like 1 fourth plus a half is 3 fourths, using a little fraction work there. All right, and so uh, now we just need another point. So let's pick another input. I don't have a point for x equals 2. So why don't we just input 2 into this function and see what comes out. All 
All right, so uh, we do this, and we can probably do this mentally. Uh, remember to square first, so that's 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, plus 6, plus 9. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2, plus 9 is positive 7. So the point 2, 7 is on the graph. Okay, and that is uh, 1 and 1 fourth away from the AOS. So remember, these points have to be the same distance away from the AOS, just in the opposite direction. So again, using some fraction knowledge, if I do 3 fourths plus a half, 3 fourths plus 2 fourths, that's 5 fourths. All right, and that's again 1 and 1 fourth away. So uh, that takes care of all the points I need for this parabola. So I just connect those dots. And I notice that it does open down, which matches what we learned about the A term being negative. That should flip the parabola upside down. And that is your final answer for uh, this problem number 21. We covered all the bases, and uh, we're good to go. All right, so I chose this problem out of the second block, the second type of problem that we had to do. And the directions here say to determine whether each function has a maximum or minimum value and find that value. Well, um, the way to tell whether you're going to have a maximum or a minimum is by looking at this A term. And if it's positive, then that tells you that the parabola has to open up which means the vertex, which is where the minimum value, in this case, the minimum value is going to come from, the vertex is at the very bottom of this parabola. If it had been negative, then we would have a parabola that opens upside down, and we would have a maximum value represented by the vertex, which is on the top. Okay, So we are going to have a minimum value, minimum value of, and the number that represents the minimum is going to be the y-coordinate of the vertex. So what we have to do to find this minimum value is we need to find this vertex. All right, and we've already looked at how to find the vertex. It starts with identifying the AOS. So here we are using this formula again. Uh, we already identified the A number as 2, and B in this case is negative 16. So let's plug into our formula the opposite of b, which is negative 16, over 2 times a. All right. And so uh, inside the parentheses, I have negative 16 divided by 4, which is negative 4. But don't forget, it's the opposite of negative 4, which means positive 4. So looking for my vertex, I know the x-coordinate of the vertex is 4. Now, to get the minimum value, I need the y-coordinate of the vertex. So all I do is plug 4 back into this function. It's literally evaluating this function, or f of 4. That's what we're going to be doing. So let's see what f of 4 is. 2 times 4 squared minus 16 times 4 minus 42. Okay. So uh, I think we can do this mentally. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 16 times 4 is 64 minus 42. So 32 minus 64 is negative 32 minus 42. Looks like we're going to get negative 74 as our minimum value, which is also another way of saying the y-coordinate of the vertex. So we just want to make sure you're making connections with all these terms. What do we mean by minimum value? We mean the y-coordinate of the vertex, which is the very bottom point on this parabola that opens up. Okay, so that much is taken care of. And so now we got to find the domain and range. And we talked earlier that domain for this parab any parabola um, is going to be all real numbers and hopefully you understand why. It's just going to keep widening as we choose uh, greater and lesser numbers for x. It's just going to encompass all of the numbers on the x-axis. 
The range, however, is going to vary uh, because we're only interested in what numbers will be um, used or involved in this graph on the y-axis. And um, I don't have a, a graph here, but uh, let's, just, let's just put a little sketch that might help us make a little more sense of this. Uh, if I were to estimate, let's just say that 4, negative 74 is here down here in quadrant 4, 4 right and down 74. And we got this parabola that opens up from that point. So if this is negative 74 and we're involving all of the numbers on the y-axis going up from that point, then the way we state the range is f of x such that f of x is greater than or equal to negative 74. So from negative 74 upward on the y-axis, that will be all of the numbers, y-coordinates on this particular graph. Okay, so that takes care of two of the problems, but the others are pretty much just like this. And uh, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know.